do it now. For I'm your servant. I step behind the cross that no flesh would glory, but to God be the glory. So bless now the words of my lips and the meditation of my heart that they would be acceptable in our sight, in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And all the people said together, amen, amen, and amen. Just give the Lord a thunderous applause as you are seated in his presence. God is worthy of the praise. Honor respects to the most high God who is my strength in this hour. And I thank him. I thank God I have my moments and then he reels me in. He helps me. Thank God for my lovely wife. Amen. To the men and the women of God that's here today and to all of you, the children of God in the house of God and to you that's viewing virtually, we certainly thank God. I can't think of a better place to be than in the house of God on the Lord's day. Praise the Lord. God in us. You know, uh, when you start looking at the scriptures and thinking things over. God never patches our natural virtues. Amen. Sometimes God want, we want God to make us better in certain areas, you know. But he never patches our natural virtues. He's all about making us a creature in Christ. So if you're looking for a new and improved you, this is not where you need to look. Amen. But if you want to be a new creature in Christ, amen, you're in the right place. Uh, and the thing about it is he makes us whole. He never leaves us fragmented. Amen. But I'm so glad that he does it in stages. Truth be told, we couldn't handle it all at once. No, no, no. He blow our little mind. Our little hearts would be, you know, oh, no, 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 no. But He's determined to make us a new man, a new creature. Don't, don't get me wrong. He's not coming up short. He will make us that new creature. You see, because uh, th this old natural man in this life, we said we got a lot of faults and, and, and failures, and we got a whole lot, amen, that we don't want to take off. Don't get me wrong. We don't want to take it off, but he's so determined to make us new, amen, that he will remind us of what we have to do, amen. So it, it, God plants in us that virtue to long after him. He woos us. He nudges us, amen. Sometimes he'll wake you up in the middle of the night and start talking, amen. Have you ever experienced that? Now, God, do we do we really have to have this conversation right now? See, yeah, he says yes because during the day you have so many distractions going on in your life. I want you to know it's me. I want you to know without a shadow of a doubt that this is my voice speaking to you about you. And you know it's about you when he wakes you up. Because <laughs> we really, we are really ready for him to tell us about somebody else. I knew you was going to wake me up and tell me. No, 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 no. No, I want to talk to you about you. Thank you, oh God. So this, this new life that God plants in us has its own virtues. Not what we like. It's not the virtues of the first Adam, but of Jesus Christ. He says, therefore, in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, if any man be in Christ. So, listen, any man. None of us are excluded. We are included in this. If any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creature. All things are passed away. You see why I say he's not about patching up our old virtues? Amen. Because sometimes, you know, we come and I just use this. Lord, I want to sing better. 
Amen. And God said, I don't want you to sing better. I want you to sing from a different place. Because you singing better is all about you promoting your flesh. But if you sing from a different place, uh, what comes from the heart will penetrate the heart. So God, I don't want to sing better. I want to sing from a different place. Because if I sing from a different place, it doesn't matter who comes in the house. Uh, the spirit can come and arrest them. And I don't want them to leave just saying, oh, did they not sing? No, I want them to go out and say, did not the Lord speak unto me? Oh, my, 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 my. Thank you, oh God. And see, this is what's wrong with the church and with the modern, a lot of Christians is because, again, we want that new and improved us when God wants us to be that new creature in Christ. Look at Peter, perfect example. Peter, and we all know that Peter was, oh, that guy was fickled. If any of the disciples was fickled, that was Peter. Nobody else carried a sword but Peter. Nobody else was quick with their lips but Peter. Oh, we got a lot of Peters, but anyway. <laughs> Peter was quick with it, you know. Jesus said, oh, uh, Peter, you're going to deny me. Hey, not me, God. <laughs> you were wrong in that one. <laughs> Look, and even Peter, see, you carry a sword long enough, you're going to use it. You carry that sword long enough, you're going to use it. And Peter, God had already told him, Jesus had already told him, you know, they're coming to get me. Now, when they did come to get me, come to get him, amen, here comes Peter out with the sword, cut off Malchus ears, that was the name of the soldier, amen, the Lord had to stop, you know, Peter, what are you doing? Now, what we don't look at and understand, truthfully, Peter's life should have ended right there. For you to take out a sword and cut off the soldier's ear with all those soldiers right there, his life should have ended right there. But because the Lord had a ministry for him, he said, wait a minute, hold on. I don't know whether y'all saw that or not, but here. There's his ear. He still can use it. Now, Peter, I hope you learn from this. See, we, we never think about that, do we? And even if they didn't kill him, they should have at least threw him in prison because, amen, he committed an offense against a soldier. He should have died. Some of us should have died. Some of us ought not be here. But God, somebody say, but God. Hey, but God. Amen knows the ministry that he has for you. Oh, thank you. God, thank you for revelation. Mm. And then he goes on to say, all things are passed away. And I'm sure we're good at keeping things to remind us of who we were. <laughs> some of us we, were, we used to love to go back to grandma's and go up in the attic because the attic was grandma, grandpa's former life what they used to do all the pictures, all this and all that and you could bring it and they could tell you the story all about it what happened with this and what happened with that one, amen oh girl, when I used to put that dress on now Anyway, 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 and a lot of us still have old things, amen. We tuck them away. We tuck the old things away, amen. And have you ever had a moment where you had to go and just pull it out to reminisce? Why don't we get rid of the old things? 
You know what? This must be hitting home today because y'all quiet. Old things are passed away. Behold. In other words, I want you to look at this. All things are become new. Amen. Praise the Lord. You got to learn to look for new things. Expect new things. Make new things to come forth. Amen. And not do it. See, because let, look at what he said. Let this mind be in you that was what? Also in Christ Jesus. Listen what Jesus says. Forgetting those things which are where they at? <laughs> Forgetting those things which are behind me. You know, some of us can't even enjoy the new because we're so stuck on the Can I just meddle for a minute? Some of us can't enjoy the spouse God gave us because we reminiscing over the. Here it is. Because in our minds, what we are saying, uh huh, you're going to do me just like. Oh, you just nice right now. You just sweet to me right now. But I remember what Karina did to me. Karina is married, got six other children besides yours. And you stuck on Karina when God has given you somebody, amen, to bring you and make you whole and complete. And we can't do it because we stuck on what? Old things, forgetting those things which are behind me. You got to press. Press means that it's going to require, amen, some energy and some effort, amen. It isn't always easy to forget the past, but I got to press. Thank you, oh God. Lord, help us. And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Christ Jesus and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Praise God. But it's hard for us to operate in that ministry when we ourselves are not walking in that ministry. Thank you, O oh God. Reconcile, you, you, you know, uh, uh, and, and that's a uh, a financial term because at the end of the year you you reconcile your books, amen. A amen. You bring things to a closure. See, people haven't learned how to bring things to a closure, amen. and as long as you keep it open, there's an indebtedness. You got to learn how to close it. Even about the things in your life. Learn how to bring it close. Even if they don't want to close it, you close it. You can do what you want to do. That, mm -mm. For me, it's over. It's done. It's finished. As a matter of fact, I had a, 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 a funeral for it. Yeah, I buried it. Amen. Praise the Lord. And even when it wanted to stay with me, I served it an eviction notice. You can't stay here anymore. See, sometimes you just need to go into your office, sit down and start writing out some eviction notices. Then go into the, uh, go into the uh, bathroom, look into the mirror, and start talking to who you need to talk to. Did you get it? Go right into your bed and start talking to who you need to talk to. Let me tell you what's getting ready to happen. You know what? You done troubled me long enough. You know what? You done, you done had me up in the middle of the night long enough. I'm serving you in eviction. You see this? You know how funny it sounds, but sometimes we need to do it.
Listen to what he said. He took the foolish things of the world to do what? Confound the what? You thought you could get over it by yourself. He said, no, go in there and talk to it. It talks to you, doesn't it? Lord, help us. Listen to this. But again, it's going you we need the Lord for God in us. That's the topic, God in us. Uh, you're no longer in this by yourself. When you gave your life to Lord uh, and, and you really invited him in, uh, praise the Lord, he wants to rest, rule, and abide. He wants to take authority over your life. Amen. We can't do what needs to be done by our own accord, proudness, or mental proudness. Listen to what it says. Galatians 6 and 15. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. <laughs> wow. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be unto them, and mercy and upon Israel of God, the Israel of God. Now, notice what he says. Uh, in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth any more nor uncircumcision. Let's just look at this again because these are acts that's done by man. They were instructed to do it under the old law, but he wanted them to know that whether you're circumcised or uncircumcised, it does not availeth. In other words, you don't get an advantage just because. But a new creature. Did you get it? He keeps talking, bringing up this new creature. He's letting you know that it doesn't matter what you do, you're not going to get ahead. You're not going to have the peace. You're not going to have the joy. You're not going to have the comfort that you desire, amen, by doing it your way. A new creature. <laughs> I thought about this. Uh, this news flash. There's no service tonight because we would have, amen, uh, a district meeting, but there's no district meeting. So that gives me a little bit more time. I heard somebody tell me that I was the speaker of the hour now. Just messing with you. Amen. So my eyes got big as a quarter. <laughs> anyway, I'm so glad God has a sense of humor too. Uh, listen to what he says. But a, a, a new creature. It doesn't matter what we do. Now God commanded them to do it. And a lot of them did it. But have you ever noticed, and this is what's wrong with the church. We do things out of duty but we don't do it out of devotion. We do things out of duty, but we don't do it out of devotion. And a lot of us are doing great works, but are we doing it out of the, uh, duty or are we doing it because of the relationship that we have for God? Because what we're doing, we're going around and putting a straw in our hats. And it doesn't mean anything to God because we're just simply working. Am I working, amen, because I, I said I'm saved? I am I working because I'm in relationship with God? Wow. Thank you, oh God. Because the thing that we can do, we can get caught up in our works. Anybody, anybody ever been there? Amen. Amen. You have made yourself righteous and holy because you're feeding the poor and you're, you know, you're, you're helping the homeless and you're doing all this and you're doing all of that. And, you, you, you know, are you doing it out of duty or is it your devotion? And I tell folks, whatever I do is because God is leading me and God is guiding me. And, I, you know, I don't have to, uh, sal works are not a part of salvation, but works are because of salvation. Mm. This 
listen to what it says. Hebrews 7 and 28. I'm almost finished with my hour. For the priest, for the law appoints as high priests men in all their weakness. Now this is the NIV. Listen to what it says. For the law appoints as high priests men in all their weaknesses. <laughs> Just because you are pastor doesn't mean you don't have weakness. I just read that. The law. And for some of us, our organization appoints us in positions. But we that's been appointed forget we have weaknesses. And we're going to continue to walk in those weaknesses if we don't draw night to God. Uh-uh. Come on. Uh, but the oath which came after the law appointed the son who has been made perfect uh, forever. In other words, he was a priest too. But the difference between that priest uh, and the, even the Bible, if you go back and you start reading there in the first part of Hebrews, it tells us that God, Jesus, was the priest after the order of Melchizedek. In other words, uh, amen, he was a priest of righteousness. Not just a priest to be priest. Wow. And this is what's wrong today is because we that are in the upper echelon have forgot that we've been appointed, but we got weaknesses. And when we forget, amen, we hurt and we harm others, amen, because we abuse and we use our positions, amen. And what he wants us to know that... <laughs> They appointed you, amen, but you're going to need my anointing, amen, and God does not anoint mess. No, he does not. Thank you, oh God. Uh, so, you know, that's why if nobody else is here. I'm coming to the altar to pray. I need prayer. And you know why I need prayer? Because I know me. And I know the enemy that is in me. Thank you, oh God. Uh, hallelujah. I don't care how good I can sing, how good I can preach, how good. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. I know that there is an enemy in a me that unless I give it to the Lord. Oh, God. Help us. Help us. Help us. Thank you, oh God. <sighs> you know what God is doing right now? God is actually withering up our confidence in our natural virtues. I'm so glad he loves us enough to cause it to dry up. Thank you, oh God. And when those natural virtues begin to wither, amen. And the reason why they wither is because we're seeking after sanctification. They wither because we're seeking after holiness. We're, they're withering because we are seeking after the mirror, the image of God in our life. Now, if God says that we are living epistles, seen and read by all, not only did he say we are written epistles, but he calls us the oracles of God. So not only are we to be the written word, but we ought to be the spoken word. When people see us and when people hear us, they ought to know that we are a child of God. Amen. And, and they ought to know that the virtues, my natural virtues, are withering up. Amen. And they hear. Amen. You know one thing about a Christian, you got a distinctive sound about you. You got a distinctive sound about you, and there's a presence about you that nobody else can mar. Uh -uh. No, 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 no. You can't imitate this. You can't imitate this. 
It ain't about the suit. It ain't about the suit. Uh, thank you. It ain't about the suit. It ain't about the tie. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's what you see. It's the Spirit of the Lord. Thank you, O oh God. This is what is needed, amen. Why God, why you think tells us, why do you think God tells us we are the light, what, of the world? And the light shines as bright as where? In darkness. Ooh. So he didn't save us, amen, for us to uh, be hermits. No, he didn't. He didn't save us to be in monasteries. He didn't want us to live an isolated life, a separated life. <laughs> I could be in you, I could be in your midst and yet separated. I don't have to embrace what you are about. Thank you, oh God. And by me not embracing what you are about, it ought to bring conviction. I don't even have to say a word. I don't even have to tell you, you know you're wrong for what you're doing. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. I could be the written word. Why aren't you doing what we're doing? Why should I do what you're doing? Explain to me why I need, you, you know. Uh, I don't have to explain to you. Hallelujah. You already know. If you knew the difference and you can see the difference, then you tell me what it is. Uh. Thank you, O oh God. Galatians 2 and 20. Again, I'm crucified with Christ. It ain't about me anymore. I am. See, you got to make that not just a saying, but a declaration. You have to make that a declaration for yourself. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, not I, but Christ that liveth. Look, look at that. He liveth in me. Thank you, O God. And the life that I now live, notice what he says, where? In the flesh. The life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Hello. When they see us, do they see all our natural virtue? Or do they see the Spirit of the Lord dwelling within us, speaking out and crying out? Amen. And this is what the world needs today. This is what the world, this is what the church needs today. Hallelujah. People, and you, you know what? This is what I, I, I'm looking to, for to happen. That the word goes out. There's a revival going on in Good Hope. I can't, I can't speak to any other church. There's a revival going on in Good Hope. There's a and see what you gotta you gotta make up in your mind. I'm gonna start. I, I ain't talking about no. See, we got this thing all mixed up. We think that because we done, we set out some time and you know uh, uh, from Monday to Friday we're gonna be in revival. Well, just because you come here and sing and shout doesn't mean you in revival. That simply means you had service. Revival means something was dead and been brought back to life. Revival means, amen, you see the smoke that is smoldering. Uh, you need to be, ask God, God, blow on the coals of my heart, God, uh, that where there was smoke, now the fire is flaming, oh, Lord. Uh, so it will burn on somebody else, oh, God. Lord, make me the revival. I want to go where they're speaking revival. I want to go where they're talking revival. Praise team is up singing, amen, and the word goes out. It's all about revival because, amen, what comes from the heart will penetrate the heart, amen, to God be the glory. And I'm not, I'm not singing uh, from myself. I'm not singing from my own verses, but I'm singing from a different place. When I'm preaching, it's not to entertain you, amen. It's to convict, amen, and to bring about, amen, a newness of God in all of us. God help us. 
God in us. He said it. But Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. Hello. And faith cometh by what? And hearing by what? You can't stay away. You can't stay away and walk in this revival. You can't stay away and be this revival. You can't stay away. Hello, hello. I ought to see you, amen, when prayer goes on. Why? Because I want to be that revival. You know what? And it isn't an option for us. This is what God demands of us. How I know that? Because if any man <laughs> be in Christ, he is what? A new creature. You don't have to go and ask somebody, do you think I've changed? If you got to ask somebody, it's a good, <laughs> great possibility you haven't. Amen. Praise the Lord. You don't have to touch the stove, find out what is hot. The evidence is there. And here it is. If God is in us, the evidence ought to be there. If God is in us, the evidence ought to be there. Amen. If God is in us, the evidence ought to be there. Amen. Praise the Lord. People ought not be able to do any and everything around you. Mm -mm, no, 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 no. Thank you, O oh God. And you ain't got to get all out of sort with them either. No. I don't have to tell you you're doing wrong when you know you're doing wrong. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But after a while, they'll stop doing it. After a while, they'll start doing it. You know why? Because they're going to respect that light and that life that is in you. Amen. To God be the glory. Listen, we're standing. I'm giving you back some of your minutes you gave me. You can do anything, Lord. You can use me. If you can do anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hand, my feet. Touch my heart and speak to me. You can use anything, Lord. You can use me. You can use anything, Lord. You can use me. Think about it. You can use anything, Lord. You can use me. Touch my hand. Touch my heart, Lord, speak to me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Sing it just one more time. If you can use anything, Lord, While they you sing can it. use me. If you want to make, recommit yourself. If you can use anything, Come. Lord, you can use me. Lord. I want to be closer to you. Having done all that I know, doesn't mean you in sin, the just Lord. You can use anything, Lord. I need to do better. Someone says, if you know better, do better. Thank you, Lord.
You know, there's those that need healing and deliverance. God wants to use you.